Hey, don't tell me twice. We live. What up? What up? What up? What up? What's, What's up, up, everybody? Dan and Sharon, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All typically, right. typically, y'all asking the questions, but we get to ask the questions, and y'all have to answer the questions. <laughs> right. Yeah, we never, we never really get a chance to explain about it or talk about ourselves, really. So it's mm -hmm. more. You know, usually about the business professional that comes to our events, we usually talk about them, I and we only have like what, uh, probably five or ten minutes to talk about ourselves. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, uh, Dan, tell us about you, and then Sharon, follow up. All right. Oh man, shoot. Yes. Put uh, you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like Deanna. I put her on the spot yesterday, and she was like, "Whoa." Oh, she was. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, my name is Dan Smith, uh, co-founder, uh, born and raised Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I went to, I graduated from Bishop Hogan uh, High School back when it was a, a, a private school. Uh, go Hogan Rams, uh, e either way. Um, I'm a local guy, man. I'm, I'm born and raised through and through Kansas City. I, I was uh, grew up on 33rd and Jackson over on the east side. The Linwood YMCA is my YMCA. Uh, Central High School basketball courts, the the Central Park. That's my that's my stomping ground. Um, Sharon and I, man, we met in college. Um, we uh, both pledged the same fraternity, uh, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Yo, yo to the noobs. Yo, uh, Sharon is my eight. <laughs> I was the deuce. I'm the deuce on the deuce club on the line. Um, and uh, we started a couple businesses together, and uh, we kind of landed with uh, here where we're where we are now with this uh, nonprofit um, that we started uh, called the Porterhouse KC, and uh, we felt like there was some some gaps and stuff missing, and, and we felt like we can fill those gaps. Uh, but we can talk about that later. That's me, yeah, um, Ryan. Yeah. So my name is Sharon Thompson. I'm the other co-founder of the Porterhouse KC. And I was raised here in Kansas City. I was a military brat. I traveled all over the uh, United States uh, with my dad and uh, my mom. Uh, and I've basically been here since I was about uh, eight years old. I was in Italy for uh, when I was born and um, I came here and um, I didn't know English that well, but um, I came to Kansas City because my grandmother was, uh, she lived here um, almost all her life. She was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. I had to throw that out there. But anyways, um, I went to uh, Lincoln College Prep. I graduated in 2000, and this was supposed to be our class reunion year. <laughs> and unfortunately, oh. you know, we can uh, we'll probably have to push it back. No telling. Uh, depends on when this COVID issue lets up. So, but uh, yeah, I've been, uh, I met Dan, and we just took off after we pledged. We started a couple businesses. We started uh, Smith and Thompson Maintenance was our first business we mm -hmm. started, and it was it was ahead of us ahead of uh, like we was it was getting too big for us to handle. So mm -hmm. we had to learn and take a step back and learn uh, how to operate business. We had to study, do our research, and um, about and then we we it hit us. Mm -hmm. We wanted to start a nonprofit. Uh, the Porterhouse KC came into play. So the Porterhouse KC, a little bit about Porterhouse KC. We are an inner-based uh, co-working community that provides entrepreneurship access and resources to the underserved population in Kansas City metro area. And we've been doing this for three years now. And we've been bringing business professionals such as accounting, uh, marketing, real estate, insurance and services like uh, barbers, massage therapists. And we just wanted to give entrepreneurs the chance to um, get the business of their dreams. Super so, dope. This, yep, that's and, where we- And Dan yeah. kind of pivoted and said there was some gaps and some whole other stuff that was missing, which is why we felt, Craig and I felt the need to have you guys on here, but I'm gonna pivot and let Craig get into yeah. that. And I mean, really, that's that's the whole thing. How you guys pretty much laid everything out is the exact reason why we want wanted to get you guys on with us. One to give you your flowers while you're still here because you guys are doing some great things behind the scenes. Uh, I believe I went, uh, was able to one of my one of my friends 
uh, uh, I can't think of his name, man. Armand uh, Peggy. Oh, was, yeah, yeah, he's one of your uh, yeah. one of your speakers. So that's where I first heard heard about you guys, and I've been following ever since, man. And and you guys are a real impact. So I feel like businesses now, like the ones that you listed, like barbers. Uh, I went. I work. I had a janitor service myself too, so I can understand how that gets too big. Oh, you yeah. got like four or five buildings, but you ain't got the right help. <laughs> and then, and then people uh, wouldn't work like how we was working. We was up here, you know, we do it the right way, but then we sent people out there and they yeah. wouldn't work right. So. Right. And it, yeah. it's like you work until five o'clock in the morning, you get an email at seven, you got to go visit. So, right. I, and that's, <laughs> I definitely, uh, and all of that is saying is like the state of small business. That's the reason why I wanted to bring you guys on because I feel like you truly understand the inner workings. One, having your own businesses. And then two, supporting businesses itself in a co-working uh, arena. I feel like right. you guys' services, if anything, after the stay-at-home, um, uh, uh, after this is lifted, is going to be even more important, right? right. Because barbers are going to have to wonder, you know, I'm going to have an influx of customers, but how am I going to make sure that I keep everybody safe? You know, uh, when right. it comes to accounting and, and marketing people, you know, how are you going to rebrand after such a devastating piece? And then, too, when it comes to accountants, it's like, how can I help, you know, the the community when it comes to applying for the services? Because I feel like right. that's one of the main things in all of, of businesses of color. It's like, I think we are, it's not, I think that sometimes we're not as prepared as we think we are when it comes to wanting to apply for these things. So right. in my eyes, these are, those are essential entrepreneurs. Right. And so I definitely wanted to try to speak on or speak to those entrepreneurs, uh, st speak about the state of black business um, and, and exactly how how it's how it is in Kansas City. Um, I think as a culture, there, we're already there's already some um, discrepancies with us trying to advance. Uh, I think COVID definitely has, uh, you know, peeled the curtain back on a lot of those things. Uh, I appreciate that uh, they finally uh, set up some testing sites in, in East Kansas, Kansas City, uh, because that is definitely where it is. But uh, I was talking to Kiana today and it's like, how can we and, and the thing about BSKC, we're real professional, uh, uh, professional oriented and small business oriented. So it's not that we, you know, we really care about the social side of it. But on the business side, how do those small mom and pop shops that are you know in these rebuilding areas like truce in these rebuildings like urban cafe it's in the middle of a food desert you know so they definitely need to survive but do they have everything that they need or, or and what can we do as a collective with people with us on this call and the connection that we have to keep them to keep them thriving so i, I just kind of want to open it up like that to kind of see what you guys thoughts are and uh and just kind of and kind of steer the dialogue that way yeah, dope, dope. Uh, it, you know what? It, it is going to be a long road uh, for uh, small businesses in our community. Um, we all recognize that, mm -hmm. right? Like the money is not there. Um, like you said, preparedness. This is beyond what a regular, what you would think preparedness really need means or looks like, right? Like. Even if you had three months, six months of uh, savings, like to, to cover all costs and bills and whatnot, even if you had six months worth, that is if you still had some stream of income coming in. Like that's if your stream of income reduced substantially, but you need and, and you still had some sort of income still coming in, not zero, right? Not completely depleted. So you think about completely depleted and you're dipping into savings. But a lot of our small business owners don't even fall into that category, right? As far as it relates to savings and whatnot. And it's not a, a right or wrong. It's not a, a, a bad, good or bad. It is a, um, you know how we got a lot of folks that live paycheck to paycheck anyway, like when you work for somebody mm -hmm. else. Um, it's kind of similar to that in a lot of instances, you know what I mean? For sure. Um, so you still have entrepreneurs that are trying to put food on their tables, keep their lights on, um, you know, keep their mortgages and rents paid and things like that. 
And it's it's just tough. It's going to be tough. And it's not going to look great for pro- roughly about a year and a half, maybe two years down the road, you know, depending on how soon uh, we actually get um, to a point where we can open up. Uh, but um, that's why we, we decided to present ourselves because when this thing first came out anyway, we were we we froze too, right? We yeah. didn't know what to do. Um, a lot of our interactions are in person, mm-hmm. right? right. We, we do uh, our sessions, speaker series sessions. We actually were about to open our space up right off of 31st of Truth um, to have I'm a hugger. I'm a hugger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, right before all this stuff came uh, and still playing, the, the plan is still um, to open that up and it's going to happen. Um, and, and that's like Kiana said, is going to it's we're going to dive in even deeper um, yeah. because we know the need is there. But um, we wanted to figure out a way to dive in. That's why we start kind of doing these conversations uh, through our through our page, our, our, our Facebook page, because we wanted to be open and transparent. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted folks to know that there are people out here. Um, that are there to support, um, that are here to to figure it out with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of our goal. Our goal is to try to figure this thing out with everybody else. Um, I don't think there's a, a right or wrong right now. No. Uh, I said this last night, uh, all the rules, everything's off the table right now, right? right? Like you literally can, you need to make up whatever it is that you want to make up, whatever <laughs> dream you had uh, that in the past, um, that you wanted to do or felt like you needed to do, you can do that now. Right. Yeah, right. research, <laughs> research, learn whatever you need. Learn to whatever. Yeah. Books. Harvard has so many free classes. Yale has a whole bunch of free classes um, on their websites, all e-based. Um, you can you can get certified with like fifty bucks or two hundred or fifty dollars up to two hundred dollars. So if you actually want a certification. You yep. can get that, but you don't have to pay it, and you can still get the education that comes along with it. There's just so much going on right now that every people need to tap into. Um, that it's just you know it's just it's just crazy right now. But um, I'm still excited about everything that's going on. Uh, Hurston just posted some of those uh, those those links. Appreciate that, Hurston. You got Udemy.com. You got Coursera.com. Uh, which is dope. Um, so there's so much to tap into right now. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want people to feel like they, there's nothing there and they can't do anything, right? I, I totally think, agree. Right. We go ahead. Yeah, we're trying to give them the best resources as uh, possible. You know, to to um, better themselves as far as their business. So that's that's where we stand, and we're gonna keep on pushing that. And we're going to try to find um, the best possibility to help out um, these entrepreneurs or whoever needs help at this time. So uh, I think that when it comes to uh, trying to start a business, the the main thing is funding, right? And so with us, with everybody starting off with now, the funding is is pay is going towards essential businesses or businesses that are in need of help and things like that. Do you feel like the the business idea or the model of what that idea should change like if i wanted to open up a boutique but it's not necessarily something that would get immediately funded is that still something that i should be doing or should i be trying to change it to where you know i'm selling masks for the next two three years you know like how do you (laughs) like i'm just trying to like i think i'm trying to really tap into the power of the pivot i think there's a lot of uh small businesses in kansas city that has been able to display that really really great uh, right. I, uh, I shouted out my last time. Uh, I liked how Chef Anita was soiree. She now has the district market. Um, right. and that's being able to provide like a general store in 18, on 18th Divine. Um, yeah. And so yeah. it's like, it, is that should should we as a culture continue to trend that way, or should or you know should I still go ahead and go with the gusto of what my dream is, and 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 keep going and, and try to and try to move forward from there. Uh. My opinion, uh, you should still um, do your research and um, go with go with uh, what's going to work. Uh, the pivot, if it's working for you, go with that and keep it uh, rolling. Uh, that, that's that's just um, how you um, have to operate. You always have to go with what's working for you, and that can you know blast away or take off. 
Yeah, you you um you you can definitely pivot. There's folks that are gonna have major successes in, in pivoting. Um but like you like the example that you that you put out there, uh as, as it relates to um um like the boutique type situation. Um you still can open up a boutique. Now it just has to be online, right? Mm-hmm. Figure out how shipping works. Um, you know, how can you be efficient in that? If it's local, how can you do drop offs and pickups, right? Like there's so many ways to 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 kind of make things work at this point in time. Obviously being safe in not in, in, in how we, we operate, but now is the time to really figure out what that looks like. What does that mean? What does pivot really mean? I mean um, there's some folks out here that are not even trying to be innovative, right? Or, and not even trying to, to to make change and make things happen. There's some people that can't too. So um, you think you think about the barber and beauty industry, you know, um, they're they're hit, they're going to be hit pretty hard. I mean, they're going to probably be, be hit hardest. the hardest in the urban community um, because I mean, at least restaurants can still serve to to go and take out. I'm not saying that everything's perfect in the way that it's set up and all that good stuff, but at least that they can they can still sell some kind of you know some food items and things like that. The barber and beauty industry, there's I mean, literally nothing you can do um, except for try to create some courses, online courses, and teach folks how to right. cut their own hair or but then do you their, their own stuff out of business. Like <laughs> right, <laughs> charge like five bucks to, to to show people how to do it online. Right, yeah. I need. Mean, Right, I'm, yeah, I'm right. not. Uh, <laughs> you, you miss your barber, Dan. You miss my uh, You know he is. Look at the, the line. I, you know, <laughs> what, what I do is I appreciate the barbers and the and the beauticians that are not putting themselves out there, right? Are not testing those limits because there are some folks that are out there that's doing this stuff. There's still people getting sick, man. Like we can't, we can't, we can't keep putting people's uh, lives, you know, at risk. Uh, for things, so I, I appreciate those folks that are not tipping that line and are, that are, that are hunkering down, so we can get through this thing, so they can get, we can get back to a, a normal, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. for sure. And with this question, uh, T.J. Roberts, he asks, uh, "What new pivot idea have you seen what or heard?" TJ? What? <laughs> I was just saying, "What up, T.J.?" <laughs> and he's like, "What are some of that you haven't seen?" So I'm gonna answer that right quick. So with the mask. Like uh, Craig was saying, you know, you know, mask is a the new um, form. I saw uh, Travis Kyle; he had Versace and uh, yeah. you know different types of flavors. You know, I, I actually got this one that says "Tired of uh, uh, Rona." <laughs> <laughs> it was like a Tide mask. I but used that. Tired of Rona. But and then I got a Kansas City Chiefs one. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 just wearing a mask. That's the fashion thing right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as what um, haven't we seen yet, mm-hmm. as yet to come, you know, as far as uh, food industry, uh, uh, we just know we got the curbside, you know, our pickup and pick food up that way. You know, that's all I seen different. But until things change, that's all we're going to see. Yeah, I seen uh, somebody just commented Jones Barbecue. They had a barbecue vending machine. Yeah, uh, that that was definitely <laughs> what? Yeah, that works. Like, yeah, <laughs> they they make it up, they wrap it up, and they throw it in the vending machine, and you come up and you pay, and you grab what you need. <laughs> it's fake. It's fake. That is There's also um, like new laws that have been enacted, or 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 there have been some lenience put on previous laws, and some small businesses are benefiting from that too. And that's a that's a part of doing your research. So uh, another couple other frat brothers own uh, the KC Dak shop. And so they, the law changed, and now restaurants can actually bottle up yeah. uh, alcohol and stuff like that. But they can still, as they sell food, and there's a percentage and all that good stuff. But now people can take those things as long as it's in a closed container. They can take it out of the shop. So now they've pivoted and they've changed their their model a little bit to to match what the law is giving. And now they they put in daiquiris in in, in little half gallon or, or gallon jugs. Folks take home and enjoy it at, at the house, which norm, they couldn't do that before. Right. Um, learning those those rules and, and and laws and things like that to work in your favor also matters. Um, I was showing this. This is Keith Cravat, Jordan Williams. Uh, yeah. you know, he he did a little pivot. Not 
I, I bought four of these for the family. So we all match got matching uh match. Oh, that's so uh, cute. He's, yeah. gonna, he's gonna ask for that family photo, so make sure you send right. him. <laughs> he wants that. He wants that. Absolutely. Right. Um, and then Hurston, Hurston said too, um, about the barber and beauty uh beauticians mm -hmm. uh doing private sessions on Patreon. Patreon is a paid service, um, a subscription service, uh video based. Um, and that's what he said that could pay monthly, uh, to provide guidance so they can get styles and things like that. People got kids out there and they need to learn how to cut their kids hair, do their kids hair and things like that. I mean, right. it's, it's, it's a lot that you can do, but you have to be willing to get uncomfortable to do it. Yeah, it's right. a lot of uncomfortable stuff that has to happen. I think, so, I think everything would definitely be, uh, put more on a, uh, have a personal touch to it. It's a lot more one-on-ones that have to be. I think I seen a random video of a guy. He uh, put a whole entire his barber uh, uh, chair and everything like that on the back of a trailer, and he pulled up at it at everybody's house. You know, he was outside. You know, so I, I don't know how safe that was, but it's definitely uh, <laughs> an array of ideas that are going no. out there. It's and I wanted to, and I think that's a lot of what BSKC is trying to do too. Is uh you know as we go along with this campaign we want to provide i guess like industry circles you know what right. are you doing what kind of things can we do for each other uh to be able to i guess create that new normal you know create that what it what it is because like you said i don't think anybody has the the uh yeah it was extremely dangerous <laughs> uh, <laughs> i don't think anybody has the right answers but there are people who have those extremely da dangerous pivots and then those other ones who know how to do it the right way. So um, right. definitely uh, we want everybody to continue to throw in these questions so that we could be able to answer. Cause I think that's what it is. It's like, I want these talks, especially like with you guys, this is like the small business brain trust, right? You know, throw your ideas out there so that we can be able to bounce them around and carry the conversation forward. Cause that's, that's really what I'm, I'm about. It's like, I like sparking the idea, but but keep it going. But go ahead, Keon. Yeah, and then you and Sharon touched on something that was so heat in y'all's live this past week with uh, Don Carter, um, Chris Good, all those guys about, yeah. you know, there is obviously a lot of inequities that are being shown. But can you right. talk about, you know, some of this stuff or, you know, and I, and I hate to say this, but we as a people have to make sure that we're keeping up to date with our business models and all of those things. So a lot of this has been uncovered because of COVID-19, but I wanted to hear from you guys' perspective on, you know, if you haven't been doing what you need to do and this came, you know, you, you, in, a, you in a bad spot, not only because of COVID-19, yeah. but you was in a bad spot, whether if you weren't treating people the right way, you was in right. a bad spot, whether you weren't even being true to the business model that you put forth in the begin with. What's up with that? Yeah, you know what? I'm I'm a little different. I'm gonna be honest with you, and and Sharon be helping me out with this a little bit sometimes. <laughs> so I, yeah, I, I need to ask Sharon a, a lot, a lot of times. <laughs> he said a lot. I'm of a little different. I, I, you know what? I'm different in that. I, I do things different, and I, I, I'm gonna. I'm. I guess I'm. A, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to put it into perspective before I actually give my 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 opinion about that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a skateboard. I'm 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 almost forty, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a little, I'm an older guy. Uh, I like to skateboard. I got an electric skateboard, right? Who does that at 40, right? <laughs> Black guy from the hood, skateboarding, right? I I am into videography. I have a drone. I have uh, what do I have? I got all kind of gadgets and gadgets. cameras and all kind of silly stuff. Right? <laughs> you really iPhone don't user iPhone, I love my iPhone. Got it right here. You me know, too, me too, Dan. To get strong for but, you know, but I say all this to say, like, there's not a, a, a I, 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 I hate putting my uh, perspective or my norm on somebody else, or the way that I do things, or the way that somebody else would do things uh, on someone else, because we all have to get through our bumps. Now, I'm not saying that. Um, you shouldn't take advice from people. I'm not saying that um, you shouldn't uh, prepare your business the right way. I mean, you know, things that traditionally sure. folks that establish themselves the right way, whatever that looks like. But at the end of the day, like, you, we all have to do us. You got to do you, right? 
So if that doing you puts you in this situation that you're in now, we got to figure out a way to do you in a way that um, works for the business too, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, a, I'm like, if, if excuse, I don't, I don't know if we can, can we cuss on this? I don't, I don't want to mess up. You no, know, every, right. everybody's been dropping bombs. <laughs> 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 if, 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 if you fuck up, right? If you fuck up, if you do some stuff that, that puts you in a fucked up situation, figure out a way to get out of that situation. It happens. Right. Nobody has a perfect business model. There's not a perfect way to do any of this shit. Everybody's trying to figure this thing out. So let's figure it out together. Right. Yeah. Hit us up. See what we could do. Tell us you fucked up. Don't feel like everybody has to feel like they have to put a, uh, have a put on. Right. Like I have to, like you see this camera set up, right? I got this movie thing. I got this depth background. So you can't really see the background because it's fuzzy. But, you know, it's a, it's a put on, right? I just right. wanted to do something that was different, right? Mm -hmm. From everybody else's Zooms and whatever else they look like. But it's just because, just because I want to do it, right? So let's let's just do it. You know, if, right. you got questions, if you got things that you want to get out, you want to express yourself, you want to mess up, you want to. Uh, get back together. You want to tell people about your fuck ups and then come back and say, all right, I fucked up. Now, what can I do to make this right? Let's do all that. It's right. cool. It is what it is. Right. Nobody knew COVID was coming. Right. <laughs> and the thing right. about business is, you know, it's it's good to fail. You know, to, it's good to fail, fail, fail. You know, you fail yeah. at business and try to find that right piece, you know, to be successful. You know, uh, not every business is always going to be successful right off the top. You know, it might take time. You got to find that niche and then you you're going to hit that that niche and then it's going to take off. You just never know. It's like playing chess. I always say that a business is like playing chess. Find that right. Uh, that right piece to get that checkmate. And I, and that's that's I, definitely I guess I'm going on rent too, so I apologize. He's no, no, you good, he man. does that all the time. Me, so. I think me a time and just be like, "Hey, you're doing too much." And I, I got you. I got you. I think that's just everybody, right? It's like you, you, we need that transparency, right? Like you, you have to have it. You don't know that you're, a, you know, a fuck up until you tell somebody and they agree with you. Like, yeah, that was, you know, what I'm saying. So that transparency is definitely needed, and I feel like. Uh, what we're trying to create is is that safe haven for for people to do so, you know, right. or just amongst us, not just BSKC, but it's like there's got to be this new norm of, all right, we are all now in the even play, playing field, mm -hmm. and it's like, what what is it that you feel like your strengths are, and we should be able to share our strengths without without feeling like we're we're weak. I think I heard that from in one of Kiana's lives last last night. It's right. like you cannot. You can't. It's, it's 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 time to put the guard down, and it's really time to really join our arms because, again, like it's one is strength in numbers, and right. two it's like we we have to lean on each other because it's already like when you think of small business as a whole, this as you as you can see from this first wave of resources that was sent from the government, it was already, you know, dispersed wrong for small businesses. Not let alone you being a black business. So it's like. Right. At this time, I, I'm trying to create or I would like to um, inspire people to have the mindset of you don't have to rely on the outside resources when you can rely on your community to right. help you grow. And Support. I mean, it might not be financially, but we can at least do some some parties where we all go into the same spot. You know what I mean? And and we're and we're and we're definitely and we're increasing their revenue for that day and then just go on to the next person, you know, and that's. That's really what I feel like this can do for our community, and I think there needs just there just needs to be that understanding and that and that uh, that transparency to understand that you can come to somebody or you can come to platforms like this and and get it out and we're out we're here to help and not judge. Right, and uh, we basically have to um, you know be leaders ourselves. You know, we can't just uh, we have to get past the the gatekeepers. Skip skip that. Throw that out the window. You about to turn we just have to uh, work together and do it ourselves, you know, and or and support each other, uh, buy each other's uh, products or whatever they have, you know. Uh, that's why I uh, created the Porterhouse group page for um, and entrepreneurs to put their products or whatever they're selling. Uh, Chantel Thomas, she does a good job uh, with promoting her uh, whatever she has out there on the page. But I'm trying to get other entrepreneurs to get. Yeah, she's on everything. <laughs> I'm 
trying to get entrepreneurs on there, you know, to uh, help them, you know, uh, get sales or whatever they're trying to do to uh, to uh, get money for their products. And I guess what I was more so kind of making my point to is just like with you guys getting ready to open up this entrepreneurship hub. This is freaking right. huge. I don't care what nobody say. I need. And by the way, we need an invitation because we want to. Come yeah, up, pull up, like, yeah. <laughs> 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 right. but, no, but really, it's like I'm supporting you guys because of the relationship that's already been established, and so it, it, I think yes, that's great. To Dan's point, I agree with a lot of that. You know, if you messed up, you messed up. We need to acknowledge right. that. You need to be transparent and not try to cover everything up and just own up to that. Um, but then there's a flip side too, where business is business, and so. You know, if I haven't been building these relationships or I haven't been being authentic in that process or already doing a lot of these things, it, it does have an impact. You know, so when COVID lifts, you want to make sure because it's it's a heart to heart thing at this point. You know, right. who who is? Yes, yeah, a product, too. And I want to support that. But it's like, all right, I'm rocking with Dan and Sharon because Dan and Sharon been true since day one. And you're going to find do we, do we do ourselves a disservice of just you know, as a people, if we're in that position where we're the ones that's doing that because, and then we play the bank, the blame game, like, oh, okay, they, we don't support black, we don't support our own, like, you know what I mean? It's like, right. have to examine that and figure out, okay, you, you might, you might be doing everything right and I'm happy to support you, but if you're not, I don't want to be sitting up in your shop and... So, so this you know is the thing. I just, I had, uh, on the, before this draft thing came on back here, I had, uh, I was watching the Green Book Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you any, any of you guys watched the Green Book or anything like that, but uh, about a year ago and you can ask, I mean, Sharon will tell you, like, I, that's all I was talking about. Like when it when it came out and war season came, I was like, Green Book, you know, this is crazy. Right. <laughs> and, and Killer Mike had, you know, on the Netflix uh, joint that he had um, one of his episodes, he was talking about the Green Book. Okay. And I, before that, I had no idea what the Green Book. I mean, I, I've heard of it, but I really didn't know. Exactly. What exactly that Green Book meant, right, to our communities, right? Hmm. And so then I started, I did some research, looked into it or whatnot. And so um, the Green Book, and this is for everybody, because I know you guys know what this is, but this whoever's watching, right? The Green Book is was a book that was created for uh, Black people, um, basically safe zones that Black people can travel to. Um, like hotels, they can stay in restaurants that they can eat in, gas stations that they can actually go put, I mean, get gas in their tanks and things like that. So it was a book that was put together um, that actually had all this information in there. So if you were traveling and you're African American, or black, you knew where you can go and you know where those safe spaces were, right? Um, we talk about segregation versus desegregation and all that. Back in the day, we didn't have a choice but to support each other. Right. Um, now we have options. Okay? <laughs> right. Uh, we put more, we stress more in a lot of instances on mm -hmm. our own people. And we put more pressure on our own people mm -hmm. to give excellent and be excellent and push excellence and quality service and the best in the market and the best food, clean, the cleanest restaurants and all this good mm -hmm. stuff than we do for um, mass marketed companies or, or big box companies. Um, and that's a, that's a thing, right? That's a little frustrating, right? You go into a black business, and I'm not saying that this, this does or doesn't happen, but you go into a black business and you see like a, a, a fly flying around in the, in the, in the, in the spot, right? In a, in a restaurant. You're like, I'm not coming back here no more. This is crazy. They got flies all up in here. And then you go to, to uh, Red Lobster or something, and they got flies flying in the in the back too. And you like, ah man, they got a problem. They got to fix that. I'm gonna come back next week and see how it works. Right? right? Like, right. <laughs> we put we yeah. put a lot of pressure on our own businesses, more more pressure on our own businesses than we do than we should, in my opinion. Um, and we have to embrace people more, right? We got to embrace these businesses more. We got to support these businesses more, mm -hmm. um, even if you know they they charge a little more. They might right. charge. They, you know, a premium for it because they can't get um, certain products at cost um, that are that are less because they have to because they don't um, purchase as much. Right. So they have a smaller so they have to charge their clients a little more. And right. so 
from our perspective, we looking at them like, ah, oh, man, they charging an arm and a leg for such and such, and I could just go to uh, this other shop down the street and get it for $10 less. Well, yeah, you can, um, but the more that you actually support that black business, the more opportunities it will grow and get them to a point where they can actually reduce those costs as well, right? Uh, because of the continued support. So there's levels to all of this stuff. Hmm. And, you know, I, you know, I try to, we don't really, like Sharon said, we don't talk much. And then when we do talk, we talk too much sometimes. We so, do. <laughs> I don't, so I don't. Do, do you feel, do you feel like that there are, I, I want to say, because there are different levels, right? Do you mm -hmm. feel like that there are businesses out there that people are trying to create to maybe attack each level? And it just needs to be that unified front that can be able to create, you know, that one single voice of this is what we're trying to do. Because, I mean, I've I've been, you know, I can say that I, I'm guilty of, of saying, like, this is why I don't support black businesses, because right. something wasn't right. And then I've even heard jokes, you know, you hear jokes from comedians, you know. I, I I like my customer service a certain way or this that, and the other is because we is what we've been conditioned to under, to to understand of what we like without knowing that if we make that sacrifice to continue to be a patron, mm -hmm. then they can grow and then they can you know find new employees. They can have time to sit down and write that employee manual, <laughs> manual the way they need to, so they can have <laughs> accountability in those areas that we want them to that we're expecting because we seen it from our counterparts. So do you feel like that there are businesses out there, there's a way to create that conversation or, or move it a step forward so that we can be able to continue to push that now that we're at this clean slate, you know, right. now that we're at this this time of transparency, said it, you know, right. That's a great comment. Like, uh, my thing is, uh, we are separated, you know, as far as, you know, when we um, come together and um, as uh you know, coming up with a plan like that. You know, we always want to start this over here and someone starts something just like it. And we never be like, hey, can I work with you? Right. You know, uh, I don't know if that's a Kansas City thing. It's probably not. That's probably everywhere. That's but everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, we do, we tend to do that a lot. So we just have to uh, work on that a little bit better and support each other. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as... Uh, uh businesses uh you got um you can find businesses on the call uh i remember um gosh dog he um uh, he came out not too long ago about um uh showing businesses as far as their videos are um what they um what they were doing and uh like privilege. yes yes uh he was very uh good we need something like that to keep mm -hmm. going and, you know, black excellence. We need galas. Uh, you are supposed to have a huge gala going on, you know, something that's not here in Kansas City quite often, you know? Yeah. Working on this yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Ain't forgot we, about you. We, we here to support, man. Yeah, yeah, man, we, we coming, we coming. Sometimes, but I, I, sometimes I show up late, but I got little <laughs> little bitty kids, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, man, my crew. That's most know, important. My, that's most right. important, first and foremost. But I think until, you know, we address that, 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 you know, hey, can I partner with you or let me come over here and not being, you know, uh, shy or, you know, intimidated because right. that's, again, a self issue until you address that within yourself, you're never going to be able to move forward and, uh, and approach Craig, who has a fabulous idea and I want to link arms with him, but I didn't miss out on a whole bunch of, learning opportunities pub i mean just think you know even with you and you and dan you know a lot of the great businesses y'all start i don't think y'all would have it would be no porterhouse kc if y'all would have just had these selfish ambitions and you know bro you think you or you think you know we should and you know not saying that that hasn't been the case or y'all haven't seen things differently but at the end of the day look where y'all at and so yeah, most, of us, most of us don't even make it to this point, you know, we don't really like each other either. So that's the thing <laughs> too, I guess we, we should actually put out there. Like, we don't, this is a front. Man. All of this is a front. So yeah. now everybody knows we're trying to get, we're trying to be open and honest, right? So, you know, we don't like each other. No. We are very hey, honest. Craig, Craig said too, I wanted to add on to that too. Um, you know how you, when you, when you learn, so like when I think about, so growing up, 
my grandfather, my uncle, they owned a lake house down in the Ozarks, right? Um, I got an opportunity to go to the Ozarks every summer. Uh, and then sometimes throughout the school years on some big, uh, little weekend trips and things like that, right? We got, we had, they had boats down there, they had jet skis, we had uh, motorcycles, ATVs, because this is, it was, a, it's a, it was a family house, right? So everybody had their own, but they brought it and everybody get to use them and play around and all this other stuff. Um, I didn't, I was able to, uh, I had a different norm, norm uh, when it relates to, to, to what uh, growing up looks like. I'm, I'm trying to put this together, right? Trying to make it make sense. Um, you can't do um, what, you, what you don't see, right? Mm -hmm. So if I am a business owner and all I see in the urban community or all I see in a certain area is businesses run like this, um, I feel like I could do better, but I haven't really seen or witnessed or, or participated in better. I pretty much am going to do what I've seen. Right. And I'm we have to be able to set examples for other business owners um, to be able to set get that bar um, to another level or uh, require them to step their levels up um, to be able to, to, to continue to uh, to to utilize their services or. or or go to their restaurants and things like that. But how do you do that, right? You don't do that by by leaving and saying, I don't like this and I'm out, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You do that by actually suggesting, talk yeah. to the business owners, talk to the managers, talk to the people. You know, we would like it if this happened better. We, Before this happened, we, we saw the fly, do something to get rid of these flies. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. 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 Just, in a huff, and then they don't know why they just lost your business. A company, a business owner has no clue why you just walked out on them, right? And then you go and they just lost that business and then they go out and tell 100,000 people that it was the worst uh, place that you've ever been because of this little fly. And now nobody wants to go mm -hmm. to that restaurant or nobody wants to, to go to this this place. So um, we are trying to put our position. That's why we we started this, this porterhouse thing too. That's why we started the we, we created this space over there because we want um, collectives to learn from each other. Right? It's mm -hmm. 15 spaces on the first floor. It's going to be dedicated to uh, retail based businesses. Right? Different products and services. I mean, different products that they provide. But not only do they have that space, they're also learning from each other because upstairs yeah. is a co working space. So it's an opportunity for folks to go upstairs and actually collaborate and figure out how, figure out ways to be more innovative, right? And to do these things online and, and all this other stuff that comes out of that. Um, so that's the goal. The goal is to really expand and, and, and grow that. So um, I think that we change, we get better by helping each other out, by diving in more uh, and not just getting ghosts and, and saying, all right, I'm out. I don't want this no more. And I, and I think that it's out there i think it just needs to be maybe platforms like ours or, or you guys is to really um you know shed a light on it i think one one example that i have that i know for sure of and i'm just trying to make this quick is so <clears throat> so chef anita of course she opened up soiree everybody knows about soiree uh but she had a young a young man from kck who i think was her apprentice and he probably worked in her restaurant for about six a cup six seven months and then he eventually went back to KTK and he opened up a restaurant called the Brothers Eatery. During the time of him opening up that restaurant, he still worked under Chef Anita. And you can you can see the similarities in the two. It's totally two different cuisines. Like he does, like he's got like a, a Cheeto hot, you know, you don't you won't see that at Chef Anita's place, but right. you can still see the similarities in how he does business with him Absolutely. reaching out to the community and her doing the vice versa. So I think if we can tell stories like that, put highlights on stories like that, of right. two people who are more likely, if I was trying to start up my restaurant, I'll see them as competitors, but instead they were able to see it as a camaraderie or an apprenticeship to where he can be able to launch the way he needed to launch it and, you know, be a successful business. He's been able to give out <clears throat> 50 something lunches ever since COVID started and, and, you know, people has been able to send him donations. And I almost want to say it's the flip side. Same thing happened on the Missouri side with Chef, with Chef Anita. So um, I think it's out there. I think we just need to talk about it more. You know, yeah, people... we do need to hear stories uh, about that, you mm -hmm. know, uh, helping each other out, helping startups. Uh, like uh, we have uh, actually had a past guest, Monique Waters. She um, 
she oh, yeah. um, creates like a, she helps other massage therapists become massage therapists and she wants them to branch off and open up their own massage uh, housing or locations. And she's willing to teach you everything she knows from uh, from the beginning to the end, you know, to get you out there. And we're kind of at the same spot where we want to help business uh, retail uh, uh, get their own spots. So, I mean, it's, you just have to help each other out and not be afraid to give those little secrets, you know, to get started, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. You see yeah, that? It is fire. It is heat. It is. <laughs> so I want to go back up to TJ's uh, uh, question he had. He has, as this continues, is it going to change up the startup process? And I've been really trying to think about that. And, and I, I want to say yes. Uh, and I think we kind of touched on a little bit is really doing your research on what laws are, understanding exactly what's going to be a need. I When I, when I went through the Kauffman Foundation Fast Track program, the whole thing that they were saying was business that survives or businesses of need, right? Uh, it's, it's great to have those those things that you want to do, but when you know that you're truly serving the community or you're you're filling the gap, you can definitely, uh, so I feel like this is that time to where it's like, what is that gap that COVID-19 might have been able to bring up and how can I fulfill that? And that's, that's just my understanding. I, I definitely don't want to knock anybody off for what their dream is. You know, but that's to me, in my opinion, if I'm going to start a business, I'm going to start a business of need and then starting it up, you know, it, it, it lets me, it, it brings up the question, like at first there was crowdfunding, right? You know, right. like I can get, but now that everybody's kind of in a financial ties, you really, you really can't rely on crowdfunding. Yeah. Um, and like I said, funding now, funding now is might be leading a different way. What, how do you guys feel about what the startup process could possibly be now? And uh, what do you feel like would be different from what it is now to, to what it is in the past? Um, yes, it's going to be different. We don't know. I don't think we really know uh, what that looks like right now. Um, I think that uh, we can we can guess and, and you know, whatever that looks like. But I, I think that um, it is yet to be determined. Um, I do know that, like, I, I watched, I, I check out Hurston's page, uh, who's on here, and he shows, like, his AR, VR uh, experiences, and he shows uh, what he's doing inside those headsets. I don't know if you've seen his pages or whatever, but... I seen uh, one, and I was like, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that is, like, is, is heat. Like, the online gaming, I know, I just saw... Right. Yeah. Um, that somebody got the Kansas, I think Kansas City Sports Commission or something like that, just commissioned uh, online gaming as an official sport here locally in the Kansas City area. And so mm -hmm. online gaming is about to be huge, uh, even more than what it is locally. Um, and, and so that just kind of opens up so many more uh, areas of opportunity. But um, there's just so much that is going to be out there uh, post-COVID. Uh, yeah, so Hurston just uh, posted um, uh, his name, Abdul Rashid. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 about to be like he's at the forefront of all of that. So um, if y'all don't know who this guy is, tap into that guy. He actually had a mobile gaming unit uh, that he used to drive around. People used to yeah. run out and drive. Around. Oh I yeah, think he's yeah. Still uh, but there's so many opportunities that are going to come out of this, like the telehealth industry. Like it, it was kind of like. I don't know if, if, if this is going to be a thing, you know, because of rules and regulations, but then certain people were getting approved. I mean, now telehealth is like going to like be, you know, explode. It's going to be crazy. Uh, right. There's so much. There's so many opportunities that are going to be out there for folks. And we just don't really know what that looks like right now. It's just been accelerated. You know how you always go to school. You talk about, uh, you know, you. you yes, you, it is. Yeah. So. K through 12 right now, they're teaching kids that, that, sh that should be teaching them what's going to happen, you know, post graduation. But they really can't teach to that right now because they really don't know what that looks like. Right. This is actually accelerating that. Mm -hmm. This is what that really means and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So the folks that were already outside of that system and not getting that assistance and outside of that digital space uh, are sep getting separated even more. Right. So now we really know what we need to be doing to tap into these educational systems to put technology more, especially in our communities, mm -hmm. in the, so we can learn 
how to grow and what this this next step looks like and what the yeah, future I actually is. I actually have a uh, doctor's appointment for my daughter tomorrow via video call you know and so yeah. it's definitely going to be a different experience and uh, I think it's it's crazy about the uh the esports I think there's there's two black businesses on both sides of the water there's one with Abdul Rashid and then there's uh, esports in Johnson County uh, yeah and they're both of them are really booming really doing really good and and that was one thing that I noticed about like with DJs you know if you're a DJ yeah. you can link up with a gamer and get on Twitch which is a paid program for people to watch gaming all day and you know that's how you, you drop can get a free your... game you drop free game. Game. you know it's just like there's there's right. definitely a <laughs> brand <laughs> right. like I'll try to, uh, that's a subscription service too I mean because there's so much money in all of that and I think that's what it, that's what it's going to take is these talks where it's like you know think outside the box think of how can you bring that personal experience home you know even think about that that Batman movie, a movie where uh, the Riddler was trying to bring in the, the smell of, of TV inside right. of the home. Uh, really? You know, oh, like how... no. what <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> so it's it's definitely things out there or our ideas out there that that needs to be explored to bring that 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 brick and mortar, I guess, now into a, a virtual arena. Yeah. There's a lot of lot of opportunity, man. These guys that are on here, Hurston, all these folks that are on here, man. These guys are, these are the wave. Like if and people like me don't understand their wave, right? Like I tell Hurston all the time, like he's in a different space than a lot of people, right? And when when you have a conversation with Hurston, it goes into this, I don't know, this this <laughs> outer world conversation. But it's dope, and I try yeah. to follow along as best as I can. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and you I make it to a certain like, point, and then you right, drive. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like when you talk about the Oculus and uh, yes. uh putting making apps for the the three D uh, the eyewear Oculus, and I was like, okay, make make it pay for me. Where is the grant writer like to hook you up with? <laughs> Jobs of the black right. of the black community basically is what uh, I but right. but he is yeah, but he is go to when I say he is he is he is my go to like anytime I have a question about technology anytime I have a question about anything okay. like that's you know out there that space age I'm gonna still go ask I might not understand still after I might not have a clear <laughs> understanding of what the heck I was asking in the first place but he is my guy and then when I think about gaming I think about online gaming. Abdul Rashid, I I, we, I don't think we've ever met in person, but I follow him like, and I've seen like a whole bunch of stuff that he's done, and and mm -hmm. like I, said, I saw that post today that that he put himself out there. Um, Abdul, I, I don't know if you can comment or, or about what that that post was about with the Kids City Sports. Yeah, please drop the link if you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that link in there. Uh, but that was dope. That was dope. And then you think about sports betting, like TJ just said, sports betting. That's just open up. NCAA. Right. Now you can sponsor athletes. There's so much stuff like that. We just don't know. Right. We, don't know. we just yeah. have to tell each other. And then Morgan made a good comment. She said customer service is going to look so different after this. It is. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up uh, and close up, I just wanted to kind of, Dan, I, I could say this to you. Get any imparting words. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, from you and Sharon um, and just really like some encouragement uh, and obviously I, I think the governor has set a date for things to kind of open up but I don't think that's safe <laughs> it's everybody I think it's 100% open it's, not 100% no hey Georgia Georgia's bugging out I think they're supposed yeah. to open up tomorrow mm -hmm. yeah first, yeah. they're playing so, so governors are doing third. different things. Okay, so just yeah. what are some things, you know, imparting words that, you know, you, you, can, you can get to people? Go ahead, Sharon, you go first. So uh, support each other, help each other uh, as much as possible. Uh, like I said, uh, try esports, maybe video games, uh, try e-commerce, uh, drop shipping. Uh, I mean, the uh, post office is still moving. Um, I've been with the railroad for 13 years and transportation, 
it's still shipping shipping your materials amazon fedex ups it all go through the railroad so uh keep on supporting each other and um try to buy local as much as possible absolutely so i see they first of all there's Yo. been a, a ton of dope comments on here before i get <laughs> you know, i know i see rent uh it, it went like crazy i think we it did it. like the evening the right. evening so everybody no. getting off work right right i think the first couple of draft picks have already been picked so they in they had number eight or seven or eight right now so everybody's like all right we already saw the first few so we good we could tap back in uh-huh. uh abdul said um Kansas City has positioned itself really well in the industry. He posted um, that 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 link in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Herb said that he's working with uh, Edgar uh, Palacios uh, to create VR a VR AR reality and XR reality, and, and for the Latin X collaborative. So they're doing some dope stuff. And then TJ, I see your question: um, Do you do we do work on helping startups with grant work? Um, not specifically, but you got Morgan that's actually on here too. She's watching too, um, with the uh, the library, the Mid Continent library. library. They actually hired somebody specifically to help people, um, small business owners, to to um, find grants to help them uh, through the grant writing process. So Morgan, if in, TJ, I don't know if you know Morgan. Morgan, TJ, TJ, Morgan, get to know each other. Talk to each other because that you you both are dope. So yeah, um, that's very important. That's man, that's a good source, good resource right there. No, first, no. first and dropping dropping knowledge, man. I'm like, hey, I know that's what you got. You got to get into uh real estate because I definitely ain't trying to show <laughs> like like. Let me get this 3D <laughs> walkthrough of this house. The Oculus. <laughs> <man. laughs> Hurston, Hurston, so far beyond him, and then uh, Hurston has a, a has a homie that's in Seattle that is, they're both like, it's ridiculous. I got into a conversation with them and just kind of watched the whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> My screen almost exploded when, I, when it happened. So, but it, th- these guys are dope, man. These guys are dope. Um, my, my last, my, my parting words, um, um, be different, do different, be okay with be, uh, being uncomfortable. Uh, make shit happen because that's the only way that shit is going to happen is if you make it happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, be okay breaking rules. Like rules are meant to be broken. They're not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Rules are not for everybody. Um, if you try to play into those rules, um, there is a higher percent of chance that you will fail because you're trying to play within those rules rather than breaking those rules, especially coming from uh, areas that I come from. So be okay breaking those rules, man, and let's work. Just keep working. And how do people uh, apply or get more information about the incubator space and when that is going to kind of emerge as things kind of social distancing kind of eases, yeah. eases up? Absolutely. Go to the Porter House, www.theporterhousekc.com. Um, all the information is there. Uh, click the sign up link because we do have an email, uh, email blast that we send out. We actually sent some information out today. Okay. Uh, so that was exciting. Uh, some good information yeah. that we sent out, but you're not going to know what that is because you're not on the list. If you get on right. the list, you know what that is. So just sign up. You know what I'm saying? I get the emails. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm, <laughs> good, man. I'm just saying, like people that other people that's not that's watching that don't have the access. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, Michael J. Miller, Hurston just tagged Michael J. Miller. That's the other cat that's in Seattle that's doing some freaking oh, amazing, phenomenal things. So check him out for sure. Right. Boxing, man, dude. Like we can go all day with this stuff. You know what I'm I saying? <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, though, uh, as you guys heard, please go to theporterhouse.com, sign up for their newsletter because we can go all day about this. But you definitely, if you get that newsletter, you definitely get this information. Do the same thing with bskc.org. Uh, hit that join us uh, button and sign up for a free membership right now and uh, sign up for our, our email as well, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our whole thing is about these type of conversations right here. Uh, we definitely uh, want to be the best middleman we can be for everybody. So uh, I, I'm glad you guys already had somebody to connect uh, TJ with when it came to the grant writing. Uh, but that's what BSKC is about is, is make is being the lines between the dots. Uh, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. 
Uh, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are out there um, and and we look forward to uh, getting that <clears throat> rental space whenever y'all get it up. <laughs> whenever y'all get it up and going uh, so we ain't got to use this P.O. box no more. But uh... <laughs> hey, all good. All good. Yeah, you're, we you're try on. our best. Try our hey, best. Man. We try our best to give the resources as much as possible to uh, everybody. Oh, yeah. We appreciate you guys bringing us on. Like you said, man, we don't, we don't really get a chance to talk like that. Right. Uh, oh, so we we definitely appreciate you guys thinking about us and, and and welcoming us to your platform and having this this conversation, man. I, I think it was dope. We got yes. some dope people in the comments too, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, y'all brought they just them in. in. We appreciate y'all. They talking about hitting me up. Oh, they trying to go longer. We don't got time. Yeah, Cynthia tapped in earlier. That's a whole nother conversation. The wife Absolutely. is just as dope as the husband. Got her own right. podcast yeah. going. She did took me into outer space talking. Yeah. I'm like, Cynthia, I give up. I can't. <laughs> they are dynamic duo. Dynamic yeah. duo. <laughs> Children's author, like she got her own books. Like she illustrates right. them. A whole other, a whole other thing. We need to have them both. Amazing. But uh, thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Um, meet us back here tomorrow morning. We will have Mayor Quentin Lucas on at nine thirty. Um, want you guys to tune in uh, and really listen up and, you know, hear from our mayor. He has some really uh, great things to share. Also, we really get to hear just how he's doing and, and how um, during this time we all can um, tune in to some of the things that we can help him with around the city. So uh, 930 tomorrow morning right here at BXKC. We share, out. share, share. Please let us know. Let Be, be there because this is the first time he's been able to talk directly. Yeah. To anybody yeah. about what's going on. So well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be some some tough questions asked. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you prepared for that? <laughs> well, you know, and as we mentioned, I mean, Quentin is a he. Merrick Quentin is a is a very great individual. You know, and anytime, in my opinion, somebody is willing to publicly serve any capacity within the community, that's not an easy task when you mayor or anything beyond those lines. And so, you know, we just want to support him and. Obviously, right. we got some tough things that we need to talk about, but in the process, we can love on him and support him, um, right. and and be and be a blessing. So, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. Dope. I think he's he's definitely the mayor of the people. So you yeah. know, he's he the mayor. Yes, we appreciate him. Thank you. All right, Porterhouse KC, BXKC, we out. <laughs>